so let's start with central nervous system that here you have your central nervous system right midbrain pons medulla spinal cord right of course this is your cerebellum now what really happens that you know that under this area there is a gland what is this gland by the way pituitary, pituitary gland right this is pituitary gland and there's a gray matter in this area and this gray matter in this area this is called yes hypothalamus this is hypothalamus right hypothalamus has many functions many many functions one of the function is uh, control of autonomic nervous system right so sympathetic the highest center right uh, for the sympathetic uh, nervous system and parasympathetic is residing in hypothalamus right even though uh, autonomic centers in the hypothalamus are influenced by the cortical areas and other subcortical areas right but we can say that uh, sympathetic downflow right is starting from hypothalamus right and from the hypothalamus there are fibers right let's suppose these are the neurons right they are residing in cell bodies residing in hypothalamus and their axons are going down right and these axons which are going down they are taking the sympathetic stimulation now these sympathetic fibers this is a poly, basically a polysynaptic pathway and it passes through the lateral part of brain stem lateral part of the midbrain and lateral part of the pons the lateral part of the medulla why I'm saying this that it passes through lateral part, not medial part. Does it have any importance? Or just yes. I, I like to teach every little detail. No, it has importance. You know why I'm mentioning that it is not passing through the medial or central area of the brain stem, it is passing from the lateral part. Of course, there's one right side and other left side. There are two sympathetic pathways. Why I'm saying right uh, lateral? Because lions in the lateral area interrupt this pathway. For example, if there is an infarction of the lateral pontine area, lateral pontine hemorrhage, or lateral medullary syndrome in which there is uh, ischemia or the infarction of the or hypoxia to the lateral part of the medulla, right? They interrupt many pathways, including the downgoing autonomic pathway, right? Now, these fibers which are going down, right? When they are stimulated, they can stimulate the sympathetic outflow from the spinal cord. You must be knowing that there are no sympathetic fibers going out of the cranial nerves. Cranial nerves do have parasympathetic outflow, right? Cranial nerves do have parasympathetic outflow, but cranial nerves do not have any sympathetic outflow with them, right? From the brain stem. So sympathetic outflow comes out from only spinal cord, right? And then you know that spinal cord has what are these areas? The cervical part of the spinal cord. There's thoracic part and then the lumbar part and the sacral part, right? Now sympathetic outflow is not primarily from the cervical area, right? It starts from thoracic area. For example, this is T1. This is T1 level, right? So sympathetic fibers are coming out from here. Then T2 and so and so forth. Sympathetic fibers are going out, right? And I will not go into detail, but I really want to tell you that from T1, sympathetic outflow, this is the outflow, this is downflow, down. right? And this downflow stimulates the outflow, right? It means that this downflow fibers which are coming down, they are synapsing with the outflow fibers and stimulate them, right? Now, these uh, sympathetic outflow fibers, these are coming out of thoracic cord and upper lumbar cord right so that is why we say the sympathetic outflow is thoraco lumbar outflow what we call sympathetic outflow is thoraco lumbar outflow right now uh, as you know that cranial nerves are not having any sympathetic supply but head and neck need sympathetic supply so the actually sympathetic supply which is exiting out of t1 it will ascend to the head and neck and supply sympathetic innervation to structures in the head and neck right now when we are talking about Horner syndrome we will specifically concentrate on sympathetic outflow from T1 level right T1 level this is T1 there are a few fibers which may come out from C8 
and dominantly fiber are coming from T1 and few from T2 also for the head and neck, right? So some authorities mentioned that fibers which are coming out for head and neck, sympathetic fibers, they are from C8, T1 and T2, right? But if you really want to remember only one thing, then just remember T1. T1. Is that right? From this T1 le level, fibers are coming out, right? And this specific fibers which are coming out, they are going to be distributed to head and neck. Yeah. And this part of sp spinal cord, of course, this is beginning of thoracic part of spinal cord, this part where these fibers are coming out, right? This is called ciliospinal center of budge. Cilio spinal center of budge. This point, cilio, cilio spinal center of budge. Right? Uh, of course, this is a lateral view. Let me show you a section of spinal cord at this level. Right? Spinal cord section at this level that. Of course, then there's no need to explain it. You know it that this is what is this? Dorsal root. This is dorsal root. Root should be out, my friend. What is this? Dorsal horn. Dorsal horn. Ventral horn, right? And this dorsal horn, this ventral horn, and here is intermedial lateral horn. This is intermedial lateral horn, and this is at a section is at T1, which I'm showing. Right? And as I was showing, let me show you the fibers. Here it is your uh, midbrain and palms and medulla and then cervical cord going down, right? Uh, hypothalamic fibers, which were hypothalamic fibers, which were coming from here down, they were going from lateral part of spinal cord, brain stem. Lateral part, this part of the brainstem through which these fibers are descending, they are situated laterally. Uh, that part of the brainstem is called tegmentum. What is it called? Tegmentum, right? You must have heard of these things, isn't it? Okay. Now, through the tegmentum, these fibers are descending down, right? And they are ending up, those fibers which are supposed to stimulate the sympathetic outflow for head and neck, they are ending up in this area, okay? I will give it a different color, this area, right? This area is what? This is intermedial lateral horn because here is anterior horn, this is posterior horn, intermedial lateral horn and this intermedial lateral horn from where fibers come out. These are the fibers come out for what? For head and neck sympathetic, am I right? That's right. Right? This area, right, this area is called, yes. Ciliospinal center of budge. Ciliospinal center of budge. Right? So from here these fibers are coming out. Is it clear? And of course again I will mention it that lions which are in the hypothalamus, near the hypothalamus like pituitary tumors which go upward, they can interrupt the central pathway. Right? Or there can be infarctions or tumors or demyelinating lions within the brain stem. Right, all of them can interrupt these descending pathways and uh, eventually lead to failure of sympathetic outflow to the head and neck. Am I right? Now, come back on this side. When these fibers come out, right, the fibers which are eventually destined to go to the head and neck, they will pass through inferior cervical ganglia. Sympathetic ganglia. There's sympathetic ganglia. There's inferior ganglion. There is yes, middle cervical ganglion, and there is superior, superior cervical ganglion. Right? Now these fibers, when they come out, they they pass through. They don't relay here. They don't terminate here. Right? The fibers which are eventually going to the eye, they pass through inferior and middle cervical ganglion or sympathetic chain and eventually reach where to the superior cervical ganglion and there these preganglionic fibers these preganglionic fibers they terminate over here is that right from here 
the post ganglionic fibers right they will exert what are these these are post ganglionic fibers right and eventually they will reach to their destination right these post ganglionic fibers how do they reach to the destination actually they love the arteries they have some sort of arteriophilia i think right that they go around the important arteries and hitch hike with them and wherever arteries and their branches go these sympathetic fibers go and of course very important arterial system here is carotid system is that right so basically these fibers some of these fibers go along the internal carotid artery and others fibers go along the external carotid artery right and let me draw here this is suppose internal carotid artery and here it is this is carotid bulb and here it is external carotid artery external carotid artery and here it is internal carotid artery right now some fibers this is very important to understand some fibers which go with the external carotid artery they are exiting at actually even before superior cervical ganglion they are exiting from here you are getting it yes. but the fibers which are going along the internal carotid artery all of them are coming from superior cervical yes. sympathetic ganglion right and they are intimately associated with the outer layer of the internal carotid artery outer layer is adventitia so they are really slapped against the adventitia of internal, internal carotid artery right is that right now let me remove this okay let me make it right uh, you have a big nose of course here i put the orbit right a uh, little bit out of proportion a very big orbit and of course you have your beautiful eyeball there right yeah. now here is of course interior canal fossa here it is yes middle cranial fossa a wise man is around right and here's clivus and this is of course no fun in telling what is it foramen magnum and okay now internal carotid artery as it is going up some of you must be knowing it is just in front of in this area when it is passing through the carotid canal it is just in front of the middle ear right i will make it anatomically more correct depiction of it that internal carotid artery as it is going up it enters into carotid canal then it move forward and then exit upwards through the foramen lacrimal is that right and here is yes here's a very special structure what is this structure here this is a very big important sinus here cavernous sinus. Cavernous, cavernous sinus very good this is cavernous sinus internal carotid artery enter over here and eventually it passes through the cavity of the cavernous sinus and then it exit at the top of the cavernous sinus is that right there's no problem here now as we see the post ganglionic sympathetic fibers they are around it they are hitchhiking around internal carotid artery and its branches of course of course the other fibers which go along the external carotid artery and its branches right 